Hey, welcome back. Hey, so the one thing I've been learning a lot about since getting into this uh, mining stuff is motherboards. How to configure them, how to set the BIOS up, how to flash them, uh, how to clear the CMOS, all this stuff. So this board here is the MSI X470 Gaming Plus Max, and I could not get six GPUs to recognize. And at first I thought it was maybe the CPU. Um, if you look at the old menu, you got to read these manuals. They're so uh, detailed. You know, it says multiple graphic cards installation recommendation, Ryzen series processors. Okay, and I do. I have a uh, which one do I have? I have a Gen two. Ryzen 3, I'm thinking with integrated graphics, I'm going, okay, why can't I get six GPUs recognized? So I go through the BIOS setting, I'm going to show you that right now, and I finally got six to recognize, six GPUs to recognize. It's just trial and error, and you learn stuff as you go, you hear other people say stuff, and you give it a shot. So these are mostly three, yes, these are all 380 TIs. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have these stupid fans. They don't do anything. They just look good. And they, they're more of an indicator that the system's running. So, I mean, they're not really doing much. I got this fan right now to keep things cool. So what I had to do, BIOS time. Okay. Let's go over here. And the first thing which is not what I did because uh, I was probably one of the last things I did was turn off the CSM. That's compatibility something. Let me check here. Hold on. I had it right here. Uh, compatibility support module. Turn that off. But the problem was when I turned that off, my SATA drive would uh, not boot because it wasn't UEFI in the master boot record. I'm going, oh God, what do I do? So it's like you're going down this rabbit hole. So I'm going to show you that in a minute, how you can actually convert your master boot record to be a UEFI without reformatting and reinstalling Windows and going through hours and hours of resetting everything up. Uh, it was, I just came across it and um, it's, uh, it's uh, using the WinPE, the Windows pre-installation environment. It was amazingly simple and I was like, wow, this saved me a lot. So I turned off CSM, UE, uh, UEFI only, I booted up and I now have six GPUs unbelievable so some of the other settings while I'm in here is I go to advanced mode or well, first I do fans when I come in here I was getting so good at this I go into fans and I would blast them full speed right just put them at full speed that makes them light up on those fan units I have uh, I would turn off the HD audio controller and I flip over to advanced mode go to settings these are some of the key things I would do you get good at this after a while. Uh, resize bar support, I just left it disabled. Above 4G memory enabled. Everything on here that you can set to Gen 2, I set to Gen 2. Uh, and that was good, all right? Uh, for, for keeping the HDMI in the motherboard, see, integrated graphics configuration. Set initiate graphics adapter to IGD integrated graphics device do that and then you'll keep, be able to keep your HDMI in the motherboard okay there we go I saw all that set there's nothing really else I did and like I said the last thing I did not do which I which I held off on because I wasn't able to boot because I didn't know how to get a UEFI bootable SATA drive and I didn't want to reinstall Windows and go through hours of all that configuration again is uh, turn off CSM turn that off all right, I'm gonna reboot now and we're gonna come up and we're gonna show you the six GPUs. But first, let me show you this. I still have one problem. Is this third slot, or fourth slot right there. I can't get that to activate and I do not want to, and I do not, I do not want to do this clear CMOS again and go through that and reset up the BIOS. I don't, I don't have the patience for that. I'm happy to have six. So I have this splitter in here, this uh, one in the four. And so I got one, two, three, two off that. And I even got the six slot just to see if that worked. I even got that working. So it's that fourth one. I know if I clear the CMOS, it might resolve it, but I'm happy with six. I'm not gonna push any more than six. I wanna get all these guys working and uh, chewing up some Ethereum for me. All right, good enough. So stand by and uh, I'm gonna go and I'll show you how I did the um, pre-installation environment for the SATA drive. All right, we're back. Let's go look at the devices. I go into 
device manager, go into display adapters, bam! One, two, three, four, five, six, six 380 Ti's sitting there. Again, I still have that fourth PCI slot I don't care about, man. I got six and I'm happy. I'm taking it. I'm taking the win before I got five. <laughs> now I got six. Six is better than five. So how did I get there? All right. The key thing was setting everything to Gen 2 in the BIOS and disabling the uh, compatibility support module with CSM and just only having UEFI. And then, like I said, my problem was my SATA drive was not UE, UEFI bootable. So I went into um, Windows PE here. I had to download that and I'll, I'll put the links below. And let's make this. So Windows PE, you download this. It's basically a pre-installation environment and you're gonna basically download this set up on your uh, Windows box first and then you're, you're going to uh, create a USB bootable drive and that'll help you uh, convert your boot record of your SATA drive into a UEFI likable, whatever, compatible uh, drive. And also it'll tell you if it can't do it, so you won't do any harm. And you know what, it takes seconds and you don't have to reinstall Windows or anything or reflash your BIOS, boom, it's done. So go here, this is uh, download WinPE. And once you do that, you flash the drive, It'll come up. You put the boot. You, you hit it. You know. You hit F11 in my case. F11, and you get the boot menu, and then it'll boot up into the WinPE mode, and then you get this uh, console pops up, and then you do this master boot record to GPT, and you first say validate, and it's going to check your drive, and it's going to say uh, it, that this is a good symbol, right? This is a good sign. It all works, but if it says all negative ones in that, you don't want to do it. It's not going to. It's not going to convert for you. But if you get all the good, warm, fuzzy, successful words and all that crap, you're good to go. And then all I do is a master boot to GPT convert. Takes takes like three seconds, boom, converts. And it's basically taking the, taking the existing master boot record and shimming in a UEFI boot record. So then when you boot up in your BIOS, your BIOS is now in UEFI bootable mode only, it's gonna recognize your SATA drive and boot up. So turn off that compatibility support module and once I did that, I got six GPUs, and there you go. And if you want to double check what it looks like after you've done that, you go into system information. You go over here and you see right here, boot mode is UEFI. That's a win, my God, I actually have a win today. As you can see, I got, it. this is the building graphics. Ignore that. One, two, three, GA102s are the GPUs. One, two, three, up to seven. So one to seven, six GPUs are recognized. I will spin those up and I'm gonna start my NV miner and I'm running on Ethermine and uh, I just wanna see my hash rate jump up. But once you do a lot of work on a motherboard, you, you know it so well, I'm just gonna stick with it. So I did order another X470 Gaming and I'm just gonna keep going with the one because this Asus, it's my second one. I think it's a brick. I think I got two bricks in a row and reading the internet, the interwebs, People say they get bricks all the time. It's like a bad batch go out, and they're just it just happens. So I'm gonna try new memory on that and see where I get. But again, the win for the day, the win for the day is uh, right there. Yummy goodness. Final thing is upgrading, update, uh, increasing the VM, the virtual memory, since I have an, an extra 12 gigabyte GPU. So what I do, I type performance. Right there, I just type per, and it, you want to adjust the appearance and performance of Windows to advanced, and I want, so what, six times 12 is, so 72, and I usually give it four extra gigabytes for fun, just for extra, so let's go change. So let's do seven, six. Seven, six. I'm probably doing this wrong, but this is how I've been doing it. Set it. Boom. Uh-oh. Why not? Oh, I lost. This is the first. Oh, I lost space. Oh, it ate my space. This is a new one. Blue screen. Yep, I know what happened. I'm going to go. I'm just going to have to go with 74. When I did that, this is good to know. When I did that uh, UEFI 
master boot record install it chewed up some of my space so I can't go all the way up let's just set it up 74 Wow that's good to know it used to be uh, 86 or something like that um, 86,000 megabytes so there we go I'll set that let's see if that screws anything up and that's it guys I'm gonna reboot and hope it all works <laughs> and let's get out of this all right man thank thanks for watching this is uh, troubleshooting on the fly and uh, it's it doesn't all for me it doesn't all come right away you gotta you gotta like keep reading and you come across stuff that works and you try it and then you get these wins and you're just like thank god it's working I'm happy because this stuff makes you money and it's a good hobby so I hope this helps somebody else and when I get this Asus working I will post that as well so here she goes booting back up and I'll talk to you guys later Now that that main bit of the video is over, here's some of the after party. I rebooted after I set the VM. I got my six 380 Ti's afterburners up. Got them all right there. What I do, I, I have presets. So those are my clock settings. I'm gonna lower this one because it's been crashing. I'm getting blue screen. I'm getting blue screen with memory issues. And what I also do, to prevent runaways I go into um, the curve editor and I just set my voltage at 750 and I set this one and if I go to the second GPU see it remembers the settings this the clock settings but it doesn't remember the thread curve settings so I'll do it for each one And I was control enough to bring it up, L to lock it, and then set it, and repeat. So uh, you don't have to watch this. I'm going to go through all of them, and I'm going to spring up, spin up NB minor, and just see what kind of hash I get and see what kind of problems I get. Uh, hopefully, I won't get any with the Windows, but you never know. But that's why I kind of lowered this down a bit. I used to have it at 1200, but it would consistently crash the uh, the OS, and got tired of that, so I just lowered it. All right, guys, thanks a lot. I'm out. I gotta go find my dog. Gotta feed him. Take him for a walk. Oh, and then get this thing running. All right, I'm out. Bye.